So many entrepreneurs online right now are starting businesses that are doomed to fail from day one. And in today's video, I wanna share with you what some of these business models are that you should avoid at all costs. And I also wanna share with you the one, the best, the most successful business model that you should be using if you wanna have your very own profitable and successful business online that is proven and has a chance of earning millions of dollars if you use it correctly. But first, if you're new here, my name's John, husband, father, entrepreneur, and founder of adclients.com. And over the past 10 years, I have started multiple online businesses generated $30 million in online sales. And I've done that without having to sacrifice my personal life, hustling 24 seven, or stop doing the things that I love. And right now on this channel, I help other people to do the same. The first business model that you should be avoiding at all costs is Amazon FBA, or to be honest, anything focusing on selling low ticket physical products for that matter. This model is arguably the most competitive it has ever been. For every product you search for on Amazon, there are hundreds of listings for that exact product. So imagine you are new into this model, you're giving it a go, you finally find a product, you get it listed, you get it on Amazon, you have no reputation as a seller, you're gonna be the bottom of the pile every single time. And that's if you even get to a point where you launch a product on the platform. There are so many hoops to jump through and there are thousands of people entering this market every day trying to do the exact same thing as you. And just to give you an idea of how competitive this is, at the time of recording this video, out of the 1.9 million sellers on the Amazon platform, 86% are using Amazon FBA. That is a huge proportion of those sellers and you are just gonna try to add yourself into the mix. Good luck with that. And worse still, of the people trying to make this work, only 1% of Amazon FBA sellers makes 100,000 a year. The others are struggling, making an average salary at best with far more work. But let's imagine that none of that was true. Let's imagine it's still a golden opportunity and there was still space for you on the platform. It's still not the business model to choose for this one reason alone. Low ticket price point, physical product means very low margins. You have to sell so much product to even make a slither of profit and it's not a good model for that reason. And by the way, I have a free gift for you called the Business Viability Checklist. It outlines everything that you need in your online business to be successful. The more ticks you have on this checklist, the greater the chance you have of being successful. I think it'll really help you. It's my free gift to you. Click the link that's somewhere in the description box. Tell me where to send it. We'll get it straight over to you. The second business model that's actually quite popular at the moment, but it has major flaws that you need to be aware of is creating some kind of done for you service or some kind of done for you product or an agency of some kind. The idea here is that you are providing a service for someone else. You are generating clients and they are now demanding something from you. It's a really, really tough business model. Firstly, it's hard to find clients for that type of product. You have to have a significant skill set to be able to go out there and market yourself and position yourself correctly to find those people. But furthermore, once you have those clients, they are incredibly demanding. It's very different to a business where you're just teaching something. When you are doing something for someone or you're providing a service, there is something about the type of clients that attracts that they are so demanding, they take so much time and they become quite the headache. And let's imagine you're fortunate enough to get to a point where you have five clients that you provide this service for. You are now so dependent on these five for your income that if one drops off from your service, you feel a significant hit to your income, which is an issue, especially when you've already hit an income ceiling. Because when you're providing a service for someone, let's imagine that you can only service five people because your time has capped out. So you can't scale the business, you're stuck with five clients, and as soon as you lose one or two, now you're freaking out over your finances because you've taken such a hit. And it can be very frustrating when the clients you're trying to serve are not getting the result. And that can often be not your fault but therefore, because you can be providing a service for them, but you needed to get accurate information from them to be able to give them a great service. Sometimes they don't give that to you. Sometimes they delay. Sometimes they're complaining about the work you're doing when actually they're looking at the wrong stuff and what you've provided is good, they're just not seeing it. I've personally tried this business model more than once. In fact, three times we've given this a go over the years and every time I've tried it, I have fallen victim to the things I mentioned above. I have clients that are not respecting my time, not appreciating what I'm giving them. I'm hitting a cap on my income and it's just sucking the life and joy out of my operation and I canceled that business entirely and I will not be going to it again. The third option you have available to yourself is selling low ticket digital products. Now, there's some good news here. We're getting closer 
to a model that I like. The idea of selling a digital product that has no hard costs, no shipping costs, no production costs means profit margins are higher. So I do like digital products, but I see so many people online teaching this model where you create a $17 online course or a $47 online course, and that being the entirety of your business plan. No upsells, no next step, no expensive offer after that. It's just that one product at that one low ticket price point, and it's a really bad idea. It's a bad idea for a number of reasons, but I'll share with you three of the biggest. The first I mentioned at the beginning of this video when we talked about Amazon FBA, because although it's a digital product, it's low ticket. So it takes a lot of product to make any meaningful revenue and meaningful sales, right? We've got to sell hundreds, if not thousands of this product to get up to an income that we can rely on. The second problem is you can forget about being able to run online paid advertising to sell that course, okay? If you're thinking about running a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad or a YouTube ad or even a TikTok ad to sell that product, it's not gonna work. Advertising has hit a point now where it's too expensive for someone who's selling something low ticket. You can only really make online advertising work if you're selling something expensive enough that it can balance on a balance sheet. And problem three relates to the first. The first was you would have to sell so many units of that product to make any meaningful revenue. And problem three is that that means you've got a lot of administrative headache. If you have to sell thousands of that product, you have thousands of customers thousands of people that are asking you questions, submitting support requests, and you will find you will be bogged down by emails and admin, and it will become so unenjoyable. The fourth business model on the list, although I can't believe I'm calling it a business model, is jumping on the trading or the crypto bandwagon, okay? Firstly, this is not a business. This is an investment strategy. Even if people position it as a business opportunity, it's not that. It's a very versatile, very risky, terrain, and even if you can learn the skills required to make good trades, there is no guarantees that you're always going to be able to. It's a very up and down strategy. I don't know about you, but when I'm starting a business, I wanna make sure that I'm building that business on a solid foundation, that I've got a good business plan that's going in the right direction, and that I can build upon and scale. And crypto and Bitcoin and trading is just too risky and too up and down for you to rely on as a business plan. The fifth option that you could choose is why don't you become a social media influencer? Why don't you start posting content on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or all three? Why don't you start to grow your likes and grow your views and grow your followers on these different platforms? And fingers crossed, at some point, there'll be a brand deal that will come your way. There will be some revenue opportunity that might come from that. Here's the problem. The might is a very, very big might. In fact, for most people, it's just not going to happen. You will slave away for years and years and years trying to grow a following. And even if you get to the point where you've grown a following, last time I checked, followers, subscribers, likes, don't pay the bills. That's not a business model yet. You are a content creator without a business plan. You're not only that, you are a content creator for years and years and years without a business plan. What we actually need to do is have a business plan with a product that's ready to sell to the people that are following you on social media. So being an influencer in and of itself is not a business plan, that's a marketing strategy. You can bolt that on to your business plan, but it's not a business plan in and of itself. So with all of that being said, the best business model that I have come across, that I have made millions with, is selling information. It is a business where you package up your knowledge into an online digital program, like we talked about earlier, but a high ticket one at that. I find that if we sell a course or a coaching experience where we are not providing a service, we're not doing it for them, but we are educating them to learn the skills to do it themselves, and we attach a four-figure price tag to that, it ticks every box for a business plan that's ready to scale. We're able to make great money with very few sales. Because we're charging a high price, we get great clients that value what we're doing. Because we're teaching them but not doing it for them, we have a model that we can scale because we're not hitting an income cap, because we're doing all of the work. And because we're charging that high ticket price, we can actually make online advertising work and make it profitable, and then we can scale the business. And I must admit, you'll have a lot of fun along the way working with great people that love the program that you're putting out there. And you can eventually start to build an amazing team around you as well. Now, don't forget to grab the 
business viability checklist that will really help you validate the idea that you've currently got and see if it's a viable one. And also, if you want to go further on your education for launching your own online course or coaching program, I've got a video you should check out right here where I walk through in 31 minutes my entire course and coaching business model and I break it all down for you and I think you'll really enjoy it. So check that out. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.